Galapagos, Santa Cruz Island, Cost of Living, Things to Do Guide. I wrote this Galapagos, Santa Cruz Island, Cost of Living, and Things to Do Guide to save your time and money. This Galapagos, Santa Cruz Island, Cost of Living, Things to Do Guide includes how to get there, fun facts, top things to do, a walking tour, accommodations, restaurants, nightlife, livability factors, cost of living, and final thoughts. Santa Cruz Island, the animals don't run. This is Dan from Vagabond Buddha. I last updated this post on April 29th, 2018. I'm in the Galapagos. This is a childhood dream for me. I've been to 64 countries, so not, not much surprises me anymore, but the Galapagos have. You see, I've always thought wild animals run away from humans out of instinct. But on this trip, I learned that animals don't necessarily run instinctively. The fight or flee decision seems to be at least partially based upon how other members of your species treated the animal before the moment you arrived. If other humans stabbed, shot, or killed upon arrival, they seem to remember and react accordingly. But here in the Galapagos, it's unlawful to kill the animals. The animals are protected by law. In fact, you're not allowed to get any closer to an animal than one meter. So the animals seem to learn and react to the evidence that people are not dangerous. For the most part, they will notice you and not react at all to your presence. Can you imagine how nice that is around wild animals? Also, in the Galapagos, humans are not allowed to just walk wherever they want. The Ecuadorian government requires that humans only walk on marked trails. Many of the marked trails even require a government-trained naturalist to accompany you as you walk the trails. So as you walk, you realize you're just a visitor in the habitat that other species call home. You are in their home, and you are only allowed to remain in their home so long as you remain a polite visitor. It occurred to me that this is a model for relating to nature and other species that could be used all over the world. Allowing humans only in approved areas and trails through human visitor areas would be a way society could stop plundering nature and the remaining species. This is how an intelligent species with no other predators could choose to relate to other species and land so as to preserve a legacy for all species. I hope time proves that human, humans are as intelligent as Galapagos Park Management. I share my travels and include affiliate links. If you buy something using an affiliate link, you pay nothing extra, but I make a small commission. If you would like to learn how I make money online or how to live internationally for less money than you spend at home, click here and get a free copy of my book. Santa Cruz Island, how to get there. Don't take notes as you listen. Everything I say is in writing with Google links to everything I discuss, including my free video walking tour. Just click the link in the description below this YouTube video you can also get a free PDF of this guide, including clickable map links, by visiting the link below this YouTube video. We flew into the Baltra Airport in the Galapagos from Guayaquil, Ecuador. We found the cheapest flight on Skyscanner. The Galapagos are a protected national park of Ecuador, so before boarding your flight to the Galapagos, you have to buy a park entry permit, $20, at the Guayaquil Airport. You also need to get a green tag on your checked luggage free, certifying that you are not carrying anything dangerous to the animals or plants. They will search your luggage. Make sure to register your information before going to the airport, which saves time. Here is the pre-registration link, TCT Galapagos. This beginning of this video will show you how to get your green tags and Galapagos part entry permit. Just click the link at the web page to the video. If there are two of you, one of you should stay in line for getting park entry permits while the other gets the green tags on the luggage. Once you have your green tags on your check luggage and park entry permit, then you are ready to go get your airline boarding pass. 
When you land in Galapagos, you will need to pay an additional $100 per person to enter the park. That is rumored to double soon. From Balter Airport, once you have your checked bags, exit baggage claim and look for the bus to your right. The bus is free for all airlines. The bus will take you to a dock where you'll get on a ferry to cross a short channel to Santa Cruz Island. The ferry is $1 per person. Once on the other side, jump on the $5 bus to Porta Oyora, Santa Cruz. After the bus drops you in Porta Oyora, the taxi to your accommodations is $1.50. The price is fixed. It's all in USD. Ecuadorians use US dollars as their currency. But do not bring illegal drugs to the Galapagos. The airports and 100% of the island transfer ferries include drug sniffing dogs, plus humans search the entire content of your luggage. I'm not exaggerating. Before discussing the top things to do in Santa Cruz Island, here are some fun facts from Wikipedia about Santa Cruz Island. Santa Cruz Island, fun facts. Origin of the Galapagos. Santa Cruz Island, like all the Galapagos Islands, was created by a volcanic eruptions that flowed from the bottom of the Pacific Ocean from cracks where two tectonic plates slide across the top of each other. Age of the Islands. Santa Cruz is one of the older islands on the Galapagos. Its last volcanic eruptions occurred about 1.5 million years ago. Newer Galapagos islands, such as Isabella, uh, rose above sea level just about 700,000 years ago. San Cristobal is estimated to have arisen above sea level about 2.4 million years ago. Theory of Evolution The Galapagos became famous because of the work of Charles Darwin. Because of the unique nature of the food supplies and animal species that inhabited the islands, he was able to gather evidence he later used to support his theory of evolution. Some Christ followers have adapted to include evolution as one of God's tools of creation. Others refuse to adapt, calling Darwin a devil messenger and insisting that God literally created the universe in seven days. Endemism. Many of the species in the Galapagos are found nowhere else on Earth. 80% of the land birds, 90% of the reptiles, 30% of the plants, and 20% of the marine animals are found only in the Galapagos. Uh, Santa Cruz Island, top things to do. Darwin Research Center, free. The Darwin Research Center includes exhibits explaining the history of the Galapagos, excerpts from Darwin's publications, examples of research projects underway, discussions of techniques used to understand environmental condi conditions for animals at risk of extinction, and tortoises in reproductive captivity to increase their numbers before releasing them into the wild. At one time, there were about 200,000 tortoises roaming about the Galapagos. After pirates discovered that tortoises could survive upside down in the hull of a ship for months before dying, they were almost all captured and eaten into extinction. There are Darwin research efforts underway on almost all Galapagos Islands to increase tortoise populations. Fish Market Porta Oera Fish Market Free. This is a lovely place to watch the fearless interaction between humans, birds, and sea lions. The fishermen are there to deliver their catch of the day. The birds and sea lions are there to eat fish scraps thrown by the fishermen. And the tourists are there to take pictures of the sea lions and birds as they beg for fish scraps. Water Taxi Pier. Tourist Water Taxi Gus Engermeyer Pier. It's free. This is the pier where you catch ferries to other islands and watch taxis to nearby beaches and the path to Las Gretas. This is also a great place to spend an evening after sunset. The sea lions are laying on the benches, sleeping or playing. The pelicans are waiting for their favorite meal to swim by. Tortuga Bay. Tortuga Bay or Tortoise Bay is free. This, this was our favorite white sand beach on Santa Cruz Island. 
There's a three kilometer hike from Porta Oera Central. Once you get to the White Sand Beach, make sure to walk all the way to the end, then turn right and walk through some mangroves to a beautiful cove where you can swim with baby sharks. We love this so much, we went twice. The best time to, to go is in the morning, so you will be there all by yourself. We arrived at 7 a.m., and nobody else was there until about 10 a.m. Lake of Nymphs. Laguna de la Nymphas, or Lake of Nymphs, is free. This is right in Puerto Oyora, just a few blocks from the tourist pier. There are four different kinds of mangroves surrounding this small lake. There's raised walkway and many different kinds of birds to see, including various Darwin finches. And remember, if you click the link below this YouTube video, you'll go to the web page that has Google Map links to all of these locations. So you don't need to write anything down. Uh, Las Grietas, the cracks, it's free. This is a deep crack field uh, with brackish water at the end of a one kilometer walk. You get to the trailhead by taking a water taxi from the tourist pier. Just ask for a water taxi to Las Gretas Pathway. You will walk a beautiful trail past a mangrove forest, a, a beach, a small salt lake, a cactus forest before arriving at this deep swimming hole. Bring your snorkel and mask if you want to see down into the deep crevice filled with fish below you. Garapatero Beach. Playa El Garapatero, $40. Grab a taxi in Puerto Arroya and check out this large rocky beach. It will cost you about $40 round trip for the taxi to drop you and come back and pick you up. Just tell the driver what time you'll want him to pick you up. Entry is free. Bring your mask and snorkel, sunblock, a sandwich, and some water. You can also rent a kayak when you get there. There are signs for camping there also but I didn't see anyone in the office, so not sure if you need a permit or fee. Upon arrival, make sure to walk all the way to the left as you face the water. There's a cool estuary over there for picture taking. If you're enjoying this video, please click like, leave a comment, or click subscribe below. Your simple act will move all of our videos higher in the Google search results. Next, Los Giamoles. Los Giamoles, the twin, a $40 taxi. You can rent a taxi for $40 to take you to and from Los Giamoles. The entry is free. If you ask, like we did, the same $40 taxi ride includes the next two destinations all in the same package. Los Giamoles, the Lava Tunnels, and Rancho Prometheus Turtle Reserve. All three took about three hours. Lava Tunnels. This is near Rancho Prometheus Turtle Reserve and should be combined into a single excursion for $40 as mentioned above. This is a tunnel where lava flowed to the surface about 1 million years ago. The tunnel is about 300 meters long. And finally Rancho Prometheus Turtle Reserve of the three on the same package. This is one of the many tortoise reserves that you can visit in the highlands of Santa Cruz Island. We can't speak for the others, but we love this one. There are many large tortoises living here in this natural habitat among meadows, tall tree shaded areas, and several small ponds. You'll love watching them go slowly about their day in their natural habitat. North Seymour Island. $150 per person. This was our favorite day tour that we took while on Santa Cruz Island. We got to watch blue-footed boobies doing their mating dance and a blue-footed booby male protecting an egg. There were frigate birds, large male yellow iguanas, sea lions. Then you go to a large white sand beach and swim with sea lions. They serve a tablecloth lunch on the cruise back to the pier. This is a boat trip. This tour is not available daily, so make sure to book it upon arrival to make sure you get a seat. The two tour companies I promote, Get Your Guide and Viator, don't presently have tours for the Galapagos. Please use these links if you book tours or hotels elsewhere so we can continue to create these tour uh, guides for you. 
Santa Cruz Island walking tour. You can visit the places in my things to do list using my below Google map for a walking tour. Here is the walking path I created on Google for you. Just click this map and it will guide you to each place. Remember, the link to the web page with all this is uh, below this YouTube video. When Google Maps opens, click Get Directions, then click From My Present Location. Make sure to buy a local Claro 4G SIM card in Guayaquil, Ecuador before boarding your flight to the Galapagos and load it with internet data so you aren't paying international roaming rates when you start clicking the links to all of my suggestions. Here is the embedded map. And finally, Santa Cruz Island accommodations. Most people who come to Santa Cruz Island stay in Puerto Ayora. Here are my recommendations based upon your style and needs. For the lowest prices on accommodations, we suggest booking.com and hotels combined. Huge, gorgeous villa. If there are six of you and you're looking for a high-end experience on Santa Cruz Island, this gorgeous villa on a mangrove pond is for you. I found this place in my walk to La Grietas and it is extremely gorgeous. This is a fully equipped designer home on a mangrove pond. Gorgeous Suites. This is a gorgeous flowered quiet hotel with suites along the short flowered path to the Lagoon of Nymphs. Hotel. This is a moderately priced place with everything you need in a great location. And then an Airbnb apartment. This is a small bedroom apartment, one bedroom apartment with Wi-Fi and AC. There's also a kitchenette with refrigerator, microwave, gas stove, and usable pots and pans. It's about 10 blocks outside the touristy area, but the price reflects the extra walk. A taxi to and from the tourist area is about $1.50 one way. The markets in this area are way cheaper if you like to cook. If internet is important to you, request to be placed on the ground or the second floor of this Airbnb facility. The internet is weak on the third floor. The host is very kind and knows much about the Galapagos. This is where we stayed. If you are new to Airbnb, use the provided code for a discount. Again, it's all on the web page. Uh, price check. Once you've selected where you want to stay, then use Hotels Combined to find the agency offering the lowest booking price for that property. Santa Cruz Island Restaurants. El Elden Park. On the day we arrived in Santa Cruz, we decided to walk to Darwin Research Center. We walked through this park and saw a sign that said, Vegetarian Lunch, $5. This is excellent traditional Ecuadorian, Ecuadorian food, vegetarian fish or chicken. It was our favorite meal of the Galapagos for $5. Make sure to click this link and go and stay and eat at this restaurant. It's family owned. Pizza Italia. There's an Italian making pizza in a small place called Pizza Italia, which is right behind this expensive tourist restaurant. You just click the link and go behind the restaurant. This pizza is delicious and it will fill you up for $4 USD. They also have some hot chili flakes you can add to the top. And finally, empanadas. Empanada is a um, pastry, a Latin pastry in, that contains cheese or uh, chicken. Two young women above in the picture are making and selling fresh empanadas in a food court at the corner of Grel Rodriguez Laura and Calle number 55 in Porta Arroya. They are one half a block north of this Mercado link provided. Uh, once Chung Hoi tasted these for the first time, we went back almost every night. Make sure to slice the empanada open and cram it, cram in spoonfuls of the various sauces they have. It's one dollar per empanada and one will fill you. Santa Cruz Island Nightlife. If you're looking to party in the Galapagos, you might be disappointed. You could try walking down Charles Darwin at night and listen for music. You might get lucky. This place says it's a discotheque, Panga Disco, but it seems sleepy when we walk by at 10 p.m. 
a few nights we heard music and went in and heard some live music, but mostly it's a sleepy, sleepy town. Santa Cruz Island, livability factors, walkability. Puerto Ayora is totally walkable. The middle of the day can be sunny and hot, so take a taxi at that time or wear a hat. Internet. The internet at our Airbnb was okay, but not really fast enough to, ro to run most internet-based businesses. It was frustrating. Food. Grocery store foods are outrageous compared to most anywhere in the world because of the ro remote nature of the island and everything having to be transferred by boat. Restaurants all over the typical Ecuadorian, uh, all offer the typical Ecuadorian lunch special for about $5 per person. Um, so it seems to be cheaper to eat in the restaurants than to buy food and cook it yourself in your Airbnb. For dinner, you will pay U.S. prices. We ended up buying sandwich rolls and making sandwiches to take with us on day trips when we were going to be away from town where the $5 specials were. There is an expat style grocery store at the link provided, but you can save a little by shopping in markets three to four blocks off Charles Darwin. And a link is provided to a local area where locals shop. Weather. The weather is gorgeous. It can get hot in the middle of the day, but cools down at night so you can sleep. Think hat, sunblock, sunglasses, and even a bandana you can cover your neck with when the sun is on your back. Desire to move here? None. It's too small. There's nothing to do but serve tourists. Once you have done all of the hikes 10 times, you'll want to leave. Plus, although many foreigners are retiring in places like Quito and Cuenca, Ecuador, it would be almost impossible for you to retire here, from what I hear. Even Ecuadorians are being asked to leave the islands because the population is now too large uh, for the required habitat. Santa Cruz Island, cost of living. Below is the estimated cost of living one month in Santa Cruz as a temporary visitor. Some of the estimates could be reduced as a long-term visitor or full-time expat. But the Galapagos Park entry permit only allows foreigners to stay for 30 days. We saw a two-bedroom furnished apartment for about $750 per month. Monthly cost of living in Santa Cruz Island, Ecuador. There's a table uh, at the link. Go below the YouTube video and click that and you'll see it. But uh, it ranges from about 900 low for a backpacker staying in hostels uh, or 990 is what it, what it came out to, up to about uh, over 4, 1,400 um, for someone who's uh, living life a little uh, on the higher end. So it's relatively cheap. Uh, when the medium co cost of living is more than the high cost of living, that's typically because the cost of an Airbnb apartment, which is a high-end traveler, is less than a moderate hotel room in, in this area, and that's the case here. Um, final thoughts on Santa Cruz Island. This one, this is one of the most enjoyable places in the world to visit if you enjoy seeing fearless wild animals walking along beside you. Uh, the diving is also incredible, but there doesn't seem to be many of the other cultural or historical amenities that you would, that would attract me to stay for a year or two. The world is your home. What time will you be home for dinner? If you would like to start living internationally or learn how to make money online, whether you can travel or not, please grab a free copy of my book, link provided on the webpage. If you've enjoyed this post, please leave a comment below, like, and or subscribe. This is Dan of Vagabond Buddha. Thanks for stopping by.